What's up everyone, I'm Rested here and today I'm going to go ahead and review a brand new anime that's just come out on video here in Japan and that is called Okami Kodomo no Ame Toyuki and got to kind of twist this one around to translate it uh, some could say the translation would be the wolf children Ami and Yuki um, and others might say uh, children of the wolf Ame and Yuki. Okay, Ame and Yuki, obviously, it is Japanese, but it is the name of the kids, so I wouldn't actually change that, even though the kanji itself means rain and snow, because nobody actually names their kid rain and snow. Well, maybe they do. If that's your name, I'm so sorry right now. Anyway, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about this movie. It is, first of all, a little bit of history. Uh, by the same artist and director who did The Girl Who Leapt Through Time and Summer Wars. Two films which, if you've seen them in the past, are really quite good. And if you haven't, I highly recommend you check out both. Both having completely different story ideas, plots, settings, and everything. But amazing art, especially Summer Wars. Summer Wars art is just fantastic. I really don't think there's much out there today that... Uh, can surpass the level of art in that movie. On top of it, the newest movie that he just came out with now, Okami Kodomo no Ame Tofuki, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous once again. The story though, very different and also again the setting. This director obviously likes to take his stories into different parts of Japan and use very different characters and never keep focusing on the same themes which is pretty amazing considering the fact every time he makes something it is quality. Taking a look at this in a very short synopsis, it's the story of a woman who falls in love with a man who has a very, very deep secret, and that secret is that he is a lycanthrope, or a werewolf, if you will, or a shape changer, uh, a shape shifter. It's not that he becomes your typical werewolf who goes on a rampage killing everything or is any bit related to the horror genre werewolf. This werewolf is more of the nature-bound werewolf. Sort of, nature gave birth to the quality of werewolf that they are, or lycanthrope. They meld with nature, is kind of what happens. They become one when they change. They emerge into the most wild side of the human ethos. And... It's kind of strange in the sense that they have multiple forms of wolf. Some being just your typical stand-up, bipedal, werewolf-type look. But it can progress all the way to a full-blown wolf. So, it is kind of a unique take on that. I'm pretty sure there's been those types in the past, but this one looks at it from the side of how would a natural wolf act. And what would that character that merges in between those two types, the wolf and the human, how would they act and how would they progress in a city setting, starting out with a city setting, with this kind of affliction or some would say a curse or a blessing. And it starts out by showing how their relationship evolves even though he does have this condition where every once in a while he must become a wolf, he feels the urge. It's not this kind of full moon I become a werewolf type situation. It's more I must become a wolf because if I don't the wild side can never be unleashed in me and I just get these urges where I have to go hunting, I have to go on um, the typical uh, instinctual rounds that an animal goes on. And that's kind of what he goes through. He is always far away from everyone in society, very feral even in his own natural human appearance, never wearing shoes, a little scruffy, wearing the minimal clothes possible, and when he finally does meet this girl, who she's not actually telling the story to, there's narration, but her daughter is telling the story of her mother, and so the main focus is on the mother, the woman who first meets this guy, and the start of their relationship. It then follows her further into the relationship and becomes actually quite sad. Um, because early on, and I'm not really spoiling too much because this happens very early on in the movie, the husband is killed and it's kind of a nebulous situation. We don't completely know what happens, but the sense is that since he was a wolf trying to survive in the city, 
he was hit by a car one night when he was out hunting a, a pheasant. So, because it's kind of like city on the edge of the countryside where every once in a while animals run into there and he likes to go on his instinctual hunts. But unfortunately, this leads to his death while he's in wolf form. That also concludes that nobody actually knew she was even married to this guy because when he died, they did not find a human body. They find a wolf body and they go ahead and take care of it the same way you would dispose of like a dead animal or roadkill in the street, which is actually really quite sad if you think about it. You'd have to see your own family member uh, put away that way, just taken and disposed of that way. So, I mean, it's highly morose in that sense. Not gory or anything like that. The, everything about this movie is more elegant and beautiful. There's not gore or anything like that. But it is very sad in that aspect because now you know she's a single mom because she had two kids from this guy before he dies. Now she's left to raise two children who have this same lycanthropy affliction that they can become wolves as well. And now we get into the progression of their lives as she tries to raise these kids that she's afraid to take to the hospital. At one point it even becomes kind of comical. She has one of her kids get sick and doesn't know, should I take him to the hospital or should I take him to the vet? When they throw a fit, they kind of turn into the wolf because it brings out their more feral side. But then she has to try and teach very young children that they can't do this in public or it's really going to disturb some people. Eventually, she ends up finding out she needs to move to the countryside in order to survive with these children and to keep them kind of secret as far as what they do and give them kind of the atmosphere and the environment they need to get out that wild side of them when they do decide to turn feral or go into wolf form and hunt. And that's where the story gets really interesting because we see a dichotomy of the characters. One, the little brother, he starts to become more wolf-like and become more involved in nature. And then we see her daughter, who's actually narrating the story, become someone who has the affliction like the father, but more desires to be human. At one point, the two actually get into the normal fight you would see a brother or sister or siblings get into, but it becomes a fight about, are we a naturally beast or are we naturally human? Which one are we more? And it's kind of only... It's, it's not only just looking at these characters and dissecting these characters up front, it's dissecting yourself as well. How much of you is beastly and how much of you is more human, environmental, learned, and learned by nature? Or how much is learned by the things around you, the people around you? How much do you take in? What is the dominant part of us? And their fight becomes that dissection of that philosophical question. And it's done so subtly, it's not slapped across our face. And, of course, you get the play on nature. How much does man affect nature and the environment of the animals around him? But at the same time, once again, it's not punched into your face with the message. It's not a Pocahontas movie or an Avatar movie in that aspect. And the most important character that we focus all through the entire movie on is the mother. Single mother in Japan is a very difficult situation. To this day, sadly, it's still very taboo. Unfortunately, women who are once divorced and have children are known as batsuichi, which means one strike mark. Um, the more divorces you have, the more strike marks you have against you. It makes you less desirable to men when they're looking for someone to marry here in Japan. Unfortunately, yes, it's true, there is that very old 1950s stigmatism of not ever breaking up the marriage that America used to have still exists here in Japan. And it's a look into that as well. And she didn't even get divorced. That's the most harsh part about it. It's that her husband died and she's a single parent. The great thing about this movie is we actually see the community that she moves into embrace her and actually help her build a farm in this country area that she moves to. And from there we explore how her life evolves and how her situation with handling the children's lycanthropy evolves. And I want to really just stop there because I feel like if I give away any more I'm going to kind of spoil the movie for some people. My advice to you, check it out, especially even if you can't get it with English subtitles. I don't know if it's out in English subtitles. I watched it completely in Japanese. It's great for a movie for anyone studying Japanese because mostly you're following the dialogue of the children and of course they're going to speak very simple Japanese just like children would 
but it's very easy to understand. I never had any problem at all trying to understand any of the Japanese in this movie. But at the same time, it's such a beautiful story that the simplification doesn't ruin that. Anyway, one more time, that movie name is Okami Kodomo no Ame Toyuki. All right? Children of the Wolf, Ame and Yuki. Check it out. Until next time, I'm Unrested, and this is another movie review.